Welcome to another episode of the College Underdogs Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Smith. And yes, if you're watching on YouTube, I need one more day before I get back on video. Yesterday, I thought I was in the clear with this strep throat stuff, this fever, these chills, these aches. And then yesterday afternoon, man, some of that stuff started relapsing, started coming back. And unfortunately, I am just not someone that handles illness well um, because I'm never sick. I get sick maybe once a year. I think the last time I was sick was August of 2022. So last year I got salmonella food poisoning. It was awful. So like when I get sick and I get fever and I get chill, you know, I know a lot of people are able to like tough it out and muster through it, man. I'm, I'm just not that dude. I'm horrible with dealing with this stuff because I never have to deal with it. So Anyways, if you're a person that prays, say a prayer for me. I think I'm on the up and up. I'm on day two of this antibiotic. They said they said 48 hours of antibiotics. You should be feeling back to normal. So hopefully as today progresses, things continue to get better. And then tomorrow I can be back on camera for all of you YouTube subscribers and viewers um, because I know that's important. Now, if you're a listener... Really, the only thing that you'll have difference is it'll probably be better audio because I'll actually be in my studio setup opposed to my my mobile setup, which is what I've been using this week so far. But anyways, that's a quick update on that situation. Those of you that have, you know, said get well and just kind of expressed your support, I appreciate you. That's the latest update. But uh, I'm not going to let it continue to stop me from getting content out. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got things to discuss. The American Athletic Conference, man, things are in full swing. We're hitting the final stretch of football. We're right in the uh, beginning of basketball. And uh, it's just an exciting time. So um, let me jump right into it tonight. FAU, the top 10, number 10 ranked team in the country, the you know, only ranked team right now that the American Conference has coming off their Final Four season. They're going to tip off the Barstool Sports Invitational. Now, listen, <clears throat> if you're going to watch this game, it's not going to be on TV. So your best bet is to go to the Barstool YouTube page, and that's where it'll be broadcasted. And then I think if you have Sling TV, um, which I used to have Sling TV I don't anymore, but if you have Sling TV, you can watch it there, but it's the second uh, Barstool Invitational. I think UAB was actually in it yet last year as a Conference USA team. There's usually some, some you know, I guess in the first two years, the, there's been some solid mid-major representation, and, you know, I think this is a positive thing for the conference in mid-major basketball in general, simply because, you know, Barstool has a massive brand. Um and I think whenever you can get representation from your conference, you know, in a preseason tournament like a bar stool with like a bar stool brand um, and the following that they have, I think it's only stands to benefit the conference from an exposure standpoint. Um, now, whether you're a fan of bar stool or not. Put that aside and just look at the platform of influence that they have and the audience and following that they have. And and um, I think that that being coming from the American Conference, having FAU placed in there and they're matched up with Loyola Chicago, that should be a great game. Uh, I just think it's great exposure personally. So um, uh, now getting to the actual game. Um, you know, Loyola, Chicago, this has been a really good mid-major team over the past five, six years. Of course, they had Porter Mosier, who is now at OU. Remember, he took him to the Final Four. Uh, and then a couple years after that, he took him to the Sweet 16. That was, I think, the season before he went to OU. And, um, you know, the, the new coach, it's uh, Valentine. I always want to say Denzel Valentine, the former Michigan State Chicago Bull, but it's his brother, um, and his name is escaping me right now, but his brother, Coach Valentine, hold on, starts with a D, Drew, Drew Valentine. He took over his first year. They had success, got into the tournament, and then last year they had a bit of a down year. I think they only won like 10 games or something like that, but I expect this to be a really good matchup between Loyola Chicago and FAU. 
Um, you, we've seen it, man, with some of these mid-major games to start. I mean, Bradley and UAB, that was a heck of a matchup. Now, I still feel like UAB got hosed on that final timeout call, but I don't mean for mean to take anything away from Bradley with that. I mean, Bradley had a great basketball team. I think they're d- due for a good season. Um, we saw last night with UNT and UNI, Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa, another team that – I mean, it wasn't but, what, five, six years ago, they were winning back-to-back 30-game seasons. Another just solid mid-major program with a coach who's been there for, I think, a decade and a half. That game went into overtime. Just when it looked like UNT was getting ready to run away with that, you, you know, Northern Iowa made their comeback, almost won the game. Fortunately for North Texas, they were able to get it into overtime, got some crucial free throws at the end of regulation, and then in overtime they – they 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 took care of business and were able to get the win. Rice was able to get the win. So if I, my t- tally is correct, I think the American Conference is eleven and one to start the season. Eleven and one. If I'm off, please correct me in the comments. Uh, that is not something I have in front of me. I actually didn't plan on saying that. I'm kind of just. That, that just came to me. But, yeah, they've only lost that one uh, overtime game. Uh, UAB lost to Bradley. <clears throat> so let's see if FAU can keep the streak going. I think SMU also has a game tonight. But here's what I'm looking for with FAU. Uh, and if you happen to be an FAU fan watching this, I'd love to get your input as well. Um, and if you're just a fan of the conference, you know, uh, I think it's a good thing to, to, to watch FAU. Let's support a team from the American and, and hope they do well in the stage that they're going to be on with this Barstool Invitational. But one of the things that stuck out to me from Coach Dusty May when I got to talk to him a little bit one-on-one at AAC Media Days was, you know, he talked about handling the extra attention that's on FAU now. He said that what made their team great a season ago was their fearlessness and just this this fearless mindset of attacking each game and, and, you know, playing with no fear. I mean, you're the underdog. No one expects anything of you. Just go out and, 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 you know, play without any kind of pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's the word I'm looking for. Sorry, like. there's no pressure just go out and and go and he said that he's hoping that this extra attention is or not hoping but kind of his point of emphasis is to not let this extra attention that's on them now what extra attention well they're the number 10 ranked team in the country right they're coming off a final four people have expectations of FAU now I mean not only did they just make a final four run but they have every player back from that team except one They're opening their season in the Barstool Invitational, right? There are going to be a lot of eyes, a lot of attention. And what he said to me directly, word for word, was, I don't want that to make us tight. You know, one of the things that made us successful was our fearless approach. And I don't want this extra attention to make us tight where you start overthinking, you start getting worried that you're going to make a mistake and you know, he didn't use these words, but I'm going to use these words is you kind of start playing scared, right? You kind of start trying to do, or, or you're trying to do too much. Like you're trying to win the national championship on every possession. Like you're, 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 you're trying to live up to an expectation and a target that's on you instead of just playing your game. And what is their game? What is their identity? It's being fearless. So that's what I'm going to be watching. Do we see a team that looks like they're pressing too hard? They're pushing too hard. They're trying to force things. Or do we see a team that's loose, that's playing free, that's flying around, that's playing hard on the defensive end, that's getting the ball out in transition, that doesn't look like they're scared to miss shots, that doesn't look like they're scared to attack the rim, that they're just out there playing FAU's brand of basketball. That's what I'm looking for because that's what he had said. And that's one of the things, you know, you come off a big season like that. Um, now, don't don't let the scoreboard determine whether or not FAU is playing that way, right? Because make no mistake about it, Loyola Chicago, 
I don't know what to really expect from them this year, but just looking at their recent history, I expect this to be a good team and to be a good matchup for FAU. And it's the first game of the season. You know, it's kind of a new, it's, it's not really a neutral site game, even though it technically will be considered that, I think. But, you know, this Barstool Invitational is in Chicago, right? And Loyola Chicago is in Chicago. So it's it's basically a road game, kind of. And um, we'll see what kind of turnout they have. Hopefully it's a good turnout for this game. Hopefully it has like kind of, you know, a, a March feel to it. I don't know if any of you watched that Princeton Rutgers game the other night on Peacock, but man, that had a, that had a very March madness vibe to it. So we'll see what that's like tonight. But anyways, those are the things I'm going to be looking for out of FAU in this opener. I think it's great for the conference that they're, uh, going to be representing the AAC in the Barstool Invitational. I think there's going to be a lot of people that watch, um, who, who otherwise wouldn't, who wouldn't see FAU. So, uh, anyway, so I guess the question is, will the extra attention that's on FAU make them tight and will they seem like they're pressing too hard? Let me know in the comments, your thoughts. Okay. Let's move on to the CFP rankings. They were released last night. The second, uh, set of CFP rankings for the 2023 season. And of course, Tulane was in there. We knew Tulane would be in there. But what I was not sure of is if they would be the only G5 in there. I didn't know if maybe a Fresno would creep in. Um, But no, they didn't. Tulane is the Lone Ranger right now in the CFP Top 25. They control their own destiny. If they win, they're in. And uh, as I said last night on Twitter, I think that the UTSA at Tulane the day after Thanksgiving on ABC is going to be a massive, massive game. And, um, you know, I think that uh, I think that the way Tulane's games have gone the past few weeks where they've been a little too close for comfort, I think that will kind of, the silver lining of that will be that this Green Wave team, I don't think will overlook the next two matchups before UTSA because, <laughs> I mean, they've almost had their season wrecked really three weeks in a row, if we want to be honest, three games in a row, I should say. So I think that'll be enough to keep them focused one week, one game at a time. Um, But man, just with the way they're rolling, with the way UTSA is playing, I think that their matchup uh, the day after Thanksgiving is going to be a battle of two teams who are undefeated in conference uh, fighting for a spot in the in the conference championship. And, and quite frankly, I think the way this season is going to play out is that the two teams that meet in the conference championship will be the winner of Tulane UTSA and the winner of Memphis SMU. Um, in fact, I started saying that several weeks back, if you remember, and it looks like that's how the season is, is, is playing out as we kind of hit this final stretch. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, the fact that Tulane is the only top 25 or the only ranked team in the CFP rankings, I think that helps uh, other teams like SMU and Memphis. Um, and I think it just helps the AAC overall in getting this New Year six bid. I mean, obviously we know, as I discussed yesterday, James Madison has applied for the waiver, but there's nothing right now that indicates that they're going to get a waiver. Like there's nothing at all. And as uh, a couple of you have alluded to in the comments and maybe someone did on Twitter, but basically like even if the NCAA looks to, to act on it, I mean, they're, they're so slow. (laughs) I mean, when have they ever done something in a timely manner? Uh, I think what could add some pressure on them to make a decision is if JMU keeps winning. Um, And as they get closer to the conference championship, because remember, the Sun Belt's not going to let them play in the conference championship if they're not bowl eligible. And so anyway, so that obviously that's still kind of lying in the weeds right now. Fresno State right now, they're they're looking to make a run as as far as the Mountain West is concerned. But I don't know, man, I'd I'd like to think that a one loss Tulane, well, for sure, one loss Tulane, but even a two loss Memphis or a two loss SMU conference champion is going to get that New Year's Six bid. Uh, I don't think we see Liberty enter the fold. That was the other one. I wasn't sure if maybe at 9-0, and if they would get a little love from the CFP committee, which they have not. And as we've been saying and discussing right here on this channel, they just 
they just don't have the strength of schedule, man. Just flat out. Uh, so uh, I, this is this is what's crazy though is the, the the one team I think could wreck the American Conference getting that New Year's Six bid at this point is UTSA. Um, I think because I actually think UTSA could legitimately win the conference. In fact, I said that in the preseason. They had a little lull in non-conference play when they lost Frank Harris. They had the heartbreaker to Houston. Uh, just the kind of wild game with Army. And then, of course, I think what everybody anticipated at, at Tennessee. And then, of course, getting into conference play, they they just started to play and look like the team we expected to see from the start. And now with the way they're rolling, I mean, this is a legitimate team. We have four teams that could legitimately win the American Conference. And uh, I think three of those four, if they win out, they get the New Year's Six bid. UTSA, man, I just think those three losses are really going to cripple them from getting a look from the college, the CFP committee. And um, as I continue to try and think about this and, and, and break this down and analyze this, I just can't see a scenario where they get in with those three losses. I really think their only hope of getting in was Boise beating Fresno last weekend. I think that could have helped, you know, getting – Boise as a four loss, which even some of you still thought Boise as a four loss Mountain West Conference champion would get in over a UTSA three loss AAC Conference champion just on the brand name. I don't think so. I feel like UTSA with three losses gets the nod over Boise uh, with four losses, but they didn't. That, that's kind of a, it's, it's a non, <laughs> um, I'm sure there's a way. I'll look at it a little bit more. We got to look at how the Mountain West schedules play out. Um, in fact, if you're a UTSA fan listening right, right now, put in the comments like, is there a scenario that you could see them getting that New Year's Six bid with three losses in the event they were to run the table and win the conference? I definitely do think, though, if you're Memphis or SMU, you are a Tulane fan from now until the conference championship because your best bet of getting the bid is playing a ranked 11-1 Tulane team in the conference championship. And so, because um, even that could 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 throw a wrench in, in SMU or Memphis's bid is if they end up playing a three-loss UTSA team in the conference championship. So, UTSA fans, man, y'all could be the the wreckers for 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 the rest of the conference uh, contenders right now. Um, and I'm I'm trying though. I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll do a little more studying this afternoon and looking into it a little bit more and see what I can come up with for tomorrow as far as how UTSA uh, could get into the CFP or I should say the New Year Six bid with three losses. But as of right now, man, Tulane is the team. They are in the driver's seat. They control their own destiny. Uh, They've got a chance at history right now, as I've said, being the first group of five team to win back-to-back New Year's Six or before New Year's Six BCS Bowl games. Uh, We've had UCF go to -to back-to-back, but only won one. Uh, We saw TCU in the BCS era went to -to back-to-back, but again, only won one of them. Uh, Tulane could win uh, two in a row for the first time in college football history and what will likely be the only time in college football history because from here on out, that spot's going to be um, a playoff spot. So, uh, And then the last thing I wanted to say here, uh, shout out Michael. I think it's Michael Wall in the comments. Uh, he's a consistent listener and viewer and, and definitely does his homework um, on the American Conference. But uh, he had talked yesterday when I was going on about the uh, bowl bids for this year from the AAC. He had mentioned essentially, I don't have the comment in front of me, but it was essentially saying if, if as, as the AAC, when they were you know a 12-team conference, getting six to eight bowl bids a year was, was, was great. But if you know, you're going to be a 16-team conference, you need to be looking at eight to 10 bids every year if you want to consider yourself a deep, you know, head and shoulders, best group of five conference. And I don't disagree with that, but that's why I want to pose a question right now is, what would you consider a successful rebuilding year, reloading year for the American conference on the football side of things? 
You just lost three of your top dogs. Cincy, Houston, well, Houston more on the basketball side, but Cincy and UCF um, leaving certainly helped hurt on the football side. Okay, you lose those three. You replace with six Conference USA teams. What is your expectation? Like, what do you, everyone, not just Michael, but everyone, like, what, what do you feel, what would you consider a successful rebuilding year? For me, if the AAC can snag the New Year's Six bid, and then put five other teams in a bowl game this year, getting for six total bids, including the New Year's Six, I would consider that a successful year one in the renovated AAC, personally. Um, I would like to think that this is a conference that can put eight to ten teams in bowl games year in and year out, but as I've been saying, I think for some of those schools and some of those institutions, we're going to have to give them some time to let the new level of resources take root. What do I mean when I say that? Well, the new level of exposure, the new level of revenue. Now, the revenue and the finances, that 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 doesn't start coming in until after a few years. However, that increased level of exposure, as some of you fans from these teams, you've seen your team play more on linear uh, coverage than you've seen all you know the past three or four years combined you can sell that in recruiting so let that start to take root and and let's let these teams you know build their programs and invest in their programs and as i said i think the conference outlook in the future will be okay be just fine but uh as far as this year is concerned man get that new year six bid and put five other teams in And I think that will set the trajectory for a bright future. That's it for me today. Thank you all so much for bearing with me, especially with this video stuff. Uh, I'm getting back healthy. I'll be back. I'm going to plan on tomorrow being back on video, but I appreciate you watching and tuning in to another episode of the College Underdogs podcast. And uh, I will hopefully see you all tomorrow. Trey Smith signing off.